there is not a person in this room that is not constantly up under attack. No matter how blessed you've been, no matter how successful, no matter how accomplished, no matter how healthy, no matter how fruitful you are, somewhere in your life, you are either being attacked or about to be attacked in some area of your life. What is it that will make it worth it for you to face the rejections? What is it that will make it worth it for you to brainstorm and not be intimidated and say, I can do this? What is it that will make it worth it for you to raise the bar on yourself and say, I got some more stuff in me? What is it that will make it for you when you want to give up? And God says, I'm going to bless you, but you've got to dress for the battle while you receive the blessing. With every blessing, there is a battle. I would venture to say the greater the blessing, the greater the battle. The enemy would not send that level of battle against you if there were not that level of blessing before you. The level of battle you face is an indication of the level of blessings that you stand to receive. No robber robs an empty house. Nobody holds up a bag lady because she doesn't have anything to steal. If you're up under attack, there's something to be gained. See, you got all dressed up not to run. You got dressed up to stand. Not to give place or territory. Not to evacuate the turf that's yours. And it's in these moments right now that so often we feel like backing down. Life ain't gonna be easy. Ain't nobody gonna hand you nothing. You still gotta go to work. You still gotta compete against everybody in your industry. Life still gonna happen. Why are you trying to blow up? It's the obstacles in our life. It's the hardships. It's the mountains that we climb that make life worth living. But the mountain's not supposed to stop you. Your mountain has the materials for your miracle. Just because you feel afraid doesn't mean you have to be afraid. Just because you feel discouraged doesn't mean you have to be discouraged. Just because you have fear doesn't mean fear has to have you. It's hard to handle it. You got to fortify yourself and say, come on with me. I've got to step into it. If you're going to be successful in this game, you got to have a dog within you. You got to know it's a dog fight and you got to go get that fight. A man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory by but, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure, you never give up. Grab and seize this opportunity like you've never seized anything in your life before to make something remarkable of it. Take advantage. Don't be lazy, especially in the spring. Don't be distracted, especially in the spring. You've got to take advantage of every spring that comes because there's only a handful. Life isn't forever. It finally comes to an end. One of the Beatles wrote, all things must pass. The sunrise doesn't last all day. Spring doesn't last all summer. The sunset doesn't last all night. We all have periods of time, periods of time, pieces of time. And when those pieces of time comes, what you've got to do is take advantage of each time that comes. At the longest, life is brief. At the longest, life is just a small period of time. So don't waste your springs. Don't waste the opportunity to talk to someone. Don't waste the opportunity to have a meeting. Don't waste the opportunity to come to Next Extravaganza. Don't waste the chance. Each spring that comes, take advantage of them because there's just a few. Don't let them all pass. Take advantage. Now here's number three. In the course of the seasons, one is the winter, two is the spring, three is the summer. The summer is called challenging time. In the summer, we've got two things going for us. One is opportunity, but the other is to watch out for your enemies. Nourish your values in the spring. 
in the summer. Like a mother, nourish the values. Distributors you've got, make sure that they give, that they get plenty of nourishment from you, plenty of training from you, plenty of understanding from you. Don't be short, don't be careless. Give them your best, like a mother would give the best to her child. Be like a mother in the summer and give the best you've got to everybody you can reach and everybody you can touch. It's called opportunity in the making. Be careful of those around you. Well, here's what you've got to understand. It's not the 13th floor that sends you your check. It's not the computer that sends you your check. Some live human being had to make it possible for that money to finally get to you. So remember, it's human beings that make our lives valuable. It's not systems, it's not numbers in the marketing, it's not computers, it's not the printout, it's not points and it's not royalties. What makes us all rich beyond our wildest imagination is people. So be mindful of investing in the summer in every person you can possibly invest in. They will make you wealthy. Of course you struggle to remember it in your day-to-day -day life because life is difficult and it's harder to do things than not to do them and it's harder to do them well than to do them badly. You know, and it's easy to sit around and be hopeless. I don't mean it's emotionally easy because it's not, but it's procedurally easy to be useless and to fall back into your old habits and to not discipline yourself. And it's, it's a matter of continual practice, slow continual practice. And I think a good example of that is something like weightlifting. You know, if you start a weightlifting program, which I would recommend, by the way, because it, it's tremendously advantageous physically and cognitively, you're not going to really see results for a number of weeks, and then the results are rather slow. But you can get pretty decent results over a six-month period and absolutely stellar results over a couple of years. And so you have to make sure your time frame is right and not to be too hard on yourself. And I did mention the future authoring program um, earlier. And one of the things I would recommend too is if you're having a hard time implementing your, your decisions, say your ethical decisions, that you spend a bit more time thinking them through and writing them down. And the Future Authoring Program is really helpful for that. That's why we designed it. And so get your goals straight and continue to practice every day. And if you're not succeeding, then make your goals slightly smaller. You want to you want to make your goals large enough so that they challenge you, but small enough so that you have a reasonable probability of succeeding at them on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you have to also understand that if you fail on a given day, like let's say you're trying to quit smoking and you quit for two weeks, and then you have a cigarette and you think, oh my God, now I've screwed it up. I've, I'm not quitting anymore. You smoke a whole pack of cigarettes. It's like, well, there's a couple of mistakes there. And one is, well, just because you had a cigarette doesn't mean you failed. It just means that you had a cigarette. You can start stopping again the next day. And the fact that you had one cigarette in the last two weeks is a hell of a lot better than the two weeks that you had before that. And so you've got to be realistically humble. You've got to be ambitious enough in your goals so that you're pursuing something that you regard as truly meaningful and worthwhile. You know, and maybe you can judge that to some degree if you think about someone you love attempting the same thing and think about how you would feel if they managed it. And if you would feel good, then that's probably a good... Um, what would you say? That would be a good evaluation strategy to use on yourself. So you want your goals to be of sufficient nobility so that you can live with yourself properly if you're pursuing them, but you want them to be small enough so that you have a reasonable probability of implementing them. If you're having a discussion with someone and they're talking about things that don't have those characteristics, right? That they haven't made personal. Then the conversation is almost never interesting. It's because the person is, it's just a, they're just, they really are an empty shell through which ideolog ideology, cliches and slogans are pouring. There's nothing about that that's compelling because you don't see the grappling you don't see that the other person has grappled with the ideas and come to their own unique conclusions. And it really is in that mingling of the abstract and the particular that compelling wisdom is to be found. And so that's, that's, and then concretely speaking, 
Well, there's ways of earning your knowledge, and part of that is reformulating it in your own words. That's thinking it through, right? And discussing it until you have it at hand. You can talk about it and you can generalize from it because you truly understand it. But a huge part of that is also putting it into practice and deriving your own conclusions as a consequence. And some of that can be done with debate. It's like, here's an idea I came across, and here's the idea, and here's what I think it means. And this is how I think it would change things if I put it into practice. This is how I understand this idea. And what do you think of that? Like, that's a good debate or discussion, you know? Because then the other person can say, well, I don't really agree with the way you formulated that, or I don't agree with your conclusions. And hopefully it's a real discussion and not just one-upmanship, you know, because that's a pretty dull game.